Well, hello again, Mission Control, continuing our system overview series. And today we're gonna to talk about Arduinos and the sensors that we have in the system. Let's get started. If I'm standing in front of lane two, it's the most complete lane right now that we have in the, the building as I continue to learn the sensors that we want, that we need, uh, and experiment with different ways of factoring everything. So I wanna kinda of quickly go over what we got happening here inside the facility. So. Uh, we have two boxes. We have a, a low voltage and a high voltage. So this is 120 volt, this is 12 volt over here. Inside of our 12 volt system, we have a wireless uh, control unit I call the master and a slave unit that's not wireless but it's connected via I2C uh, which is a, a network protocol over to uh, the, the master unit. And the master unit is responsible for all the thinking. It figures out what the sensors say, it talks to the server, it gets the information, it gets its instructions, uh, and it figures out what to do and when to do it. And then it sends those commands over to the slave unit, which has all the inputs and outputs that we need to control everything in the system. Uh, this is a 120 volt to 12 volt uh, power converter, which then bucks down to a five volt converter as well. That goes to a custom distribution board, which is essentially just five volt bar and a, and a ground bar. And then we have five volt uh, servos here that are all running 12 volts through them, meaning it takes five volts to turn them on and off. That's why we need a buck converter, but we're actually pumping out 12 volts from the 12 volt power supply. That goes to all of the lane valves that turn the valves on and off uh, on each of the grow beds for this entire lane. So then we connect uh, via Ethernet cable, CJ or RJ45, uh, and we come over into the 120 volt box. Now in this box, we have a 16 channel relay. Um, I don't need 16 channels, but I got this one because it allows for lots of it, uh, room for expansion. And then we have a 120 volt neutral bus bar and a 120 volt ground uh, bus bar that we can connect everything in. We need this for all the lights and everything that we're going to be plugging in uh, to the system. So uh, this this pretty big deal here, having all this stuff hooked up. Uh, we want to have, I learned the hard way, you want to have the high voltage stuff away from the low voltage stuff. Um, you can have some smoke if you don't follow what I mean. Now I've bounced over to uh, lane three just to give you a different shot. Here we have the uh, master control unit, the 12 volt uh, box in, but I don't have the 120 volt in. And what I got here is I actually have, um, this is the sensor suite. And what we have is we have temperature and humidity, dissolved oxygen, photosynthetically absorbable radiation or PAR, pH, uh, the fish tank temperature and the grow bed temperature. And we have a space for ammonia and nitrites in the future, but I don't have those sensors chosen yet. Inside, we actually have another uh, wireless uh, command unit, and it actually sits on top of it is a custom circuit board. Now, you can go back to my previous videos and see me build all these. I'm not going to go over that all here, but we built a custom circuit board so we can connect everything into. Essentially, it's an interface board that just allows all these different types of uh, sensors that have different inputs, different requirements, different um, uh, capacitor or resistor requirements to build the circuits for them. That interface board just allows us to bring that all together and then get it into uh, the wireless control unit. I'm back over to lane two. Again, this is the most complete one and now we're down to the floor. And we have here uh, is the power monitoring system. And I gotta install this on each of the lanes so we know how much power is being consumed on each lane. Right now, this lane is pulling three amps. Uh, it's at 120 volts. Uh, well actually 115.3 is what's going through at 0.2 uh, and now it's 3.02 amps. Uh, so each uh, of the lanes we monitor voltage, uh, amperage and total power consumption uh, on it as well as eventually this little guy here uh, which will probably get consumed into the master lane unit that's up above. This was an earlier prototype but the water. So this is our uh, hose that we use to fill up the fish tanks, which we haven't had to do in over four months now. Uh, but in the summertime, when it gets warmer in here, you'll have more evaporation and you do need to put some water in from time to time. Uh, so what I wanna do is put a control valve on this and have it controlled by the system as well with a float, uh, probably float sensor that knows the, the height of the water in there. And then it can just turn it on and turn it off. Now, more importantly, the reason I want that is because I have accidentally left this water on. 
And I ran out here one day and the water was almost at the very top of this fish tank. And if it would have done that, we could have lost the entire lane. All the footings would have gave out, everything. It would have been horrible. Uh, so I'd like to put some automation in to make sure that doesn't happen. Essentially, I wanted to look at my smartphone and know that I'm not in the building. And if I'm not in the building, then it needs to be turned off. So, or maybe motion sensors or something so it knows if someone's out here, whatever it is. Uh, I never want that to happen again. So we have power control here. Eventually we'll have fish tank uh, watering control here as well. All right, so now I wanna to talk to you about the sensors that we have. Right now we have, uh, this is lane two and lane two and three have these sensors. This is a temperature sensor probe. This is a pH sensor probe and this is a dissolved oxygen sensor probe. Now, out of all these, this one works consistently. It works very, very well, very reliable, very happy with it. It's also the most simplest one and the most inexpensive one, like three bucks, easy, uh, very tough. <laughs> okay, these two are made by a company called Vernier and they do a lot of school, college, university, uh, high school type of uh, sensors. So they're very affordable compared to other options that are out there. Um, the pH sensors, uh, they don't work all that well, uh, not for this. Actually, you know, both of them just don't work all that well for this setting. And, and they told me that one when I got them. Uh, but this one here is like 100 bucks, 79 bucks, I think. And this one's like 200 some odd bucks. And these are the, the best ones I could find for the price that I was willing to pay at the time. So uh, I talked to them first. I explained what I was doing and, and they clearly told me. So I'm not, I'm not sliding Vernier at all here. I want to make that very clear. Uh, for what they are, they were working really, really well when I first put them in, but they're not industrial. They're not meant for continuous usage. They're meant to be on a high school lab bench somewhere, cleaned and sterilized after every use, not in a fish tank floating on a foam, foam board here. Uh, so essentially about three months after I started using them, they stopped working. So uh, I would love to find new sensors and we still have more sensors to go. We need to get ammonia and nitrates, nitrites, all figured out. And I think if you can record nitrites and ammonia, then you can calculate the number of nitrates. So I don't think you need all three sensors. That's good, because they're expensive. And I haven't found one yet that's really gonna work in a continuous monitoring system. So um, we might have to come up with some different solutions there, but we'll talk about some more challenges and some, some of those in a future video. But we got these two sensors plus the temperature sensor going right now. Uh, I do need to put that one back down there because that is live. Want to know what's happening down that fish tank. There we go. Okay, back in lane two again. So a lot of people gave me some grief when I first got started. And a lot of people just had a good, honest question. Why did I choose to go with the Arduino platform uh, when I first started? Honestly, it's because just what I learned on. Um, there's another one out there called Raspberry Pi. And what these are, these are small computers, like a laptop, only a lot smaller, less capable, but same idea, they're just small computers. This little guy right here, small computer, little small computer there. And um, this one in particular, it's called the Wemos D1R2 is the model number. And I really like it. It's really easy to interface with. It uh, seems to be very robust. I've put them through hell. Uh, and they do a pretty good job, so pretty happy with that. Fairly easy to program. It's a C-based language, uh, if you're familiar with that. So um, pretty simple, lots of examples out there. You can just lift other people's code, uh, reuse it, and uh, it makes, makes initial integration very easy. Now, Raspberry Pi, I'm, again, I was just unfamiliar with it. I've done Arduino stuff before, so I went with what I knew. But if you're into Raspberry Pi, you could use that the same way. Uh, if you're gonna learn one or the other, if you're brand new, never coded before, Arduino. Um, if you have coded and you want power, Raspberry Pi. Um, but even these boards right here, they're even more capable than what I really need in this system. So in the future, I'd like to take the designs that I have and create a custom circuit board, custom computer that has everything on it that I need. Kind of take all of this stuff here and put it onto one. You know, a power supply might be kind of hard, but the rest of it, I think we can do. So that's why I chose Arduino. I just knew it. It was easy, easy to put together. And uh, the code, it works, works pretty well. So you might think that putting all these electronics together and everything is kind of hard stuff. Well, I'll be honest, it's not. It's not that complicated. I think really anyone can do it. 
Uh, you just gotta kind of sit down and trudge through some data and put it all together. And, and once you understand the basics of the physics, moving electricity around, you're good. You know, positive ground, circuit closed type of, you know, what, what they taught us in middle school. Um, the har hardest, hardest part of all this is building all these cables. Oh my goodness, it takes forever to build cables. And there are so many small pieces, connectors, different types of connectors, crimpers that you need to have, special tools that you need to have to build these cables and all the little pins and everything that go into it. You know, uh, here's a good example right here. Let me show you. So this is a uh, standard RJ45 cable, Cat6 cable with an RJ45 connector on it, excuse me. And you, I had to build this. So all the, all the wires are inside of there, but the connector, you have to put that on. And then these connectors that go into the board, you have to build all those as well. Uh, you have to put them all together. So you need a special tool that crimps everything just right. Uh, and then you have to buy all these little connectors. That's what was a killer. So it took a heck of a long time to build all the cables here, all these cables coming in. You know, length is just length, that's no problem, but all the special connections that you have to have uh, for the sensor box, everything, just you have to go from what they did into what you're doing, you have to convert things. Uh, those cables really were quite a pain. So yeah, lots of work went into the automation and I'm not done yet. I still have lane one and lane four and lane three's uh, power boxes to put in, the 120 volt pack boxes to put in, lots of cables to build, sensors I still need to get done. I'm hoping to get that all done before spring gets here, so we'll see how that goes. Um, why, why automation? Why do you even care? Jeff, you're making it too complicated. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I totally, absolutely, 100%, 100,000% emphatically disagree with that. Automation is here to help us, and computers used for the right reasons can actually be helpful. I mean, who doesn't like a calculator? Who hasn't enjoyed their smartphone? Although smartphones starting to become like an addiction and it's messing with people's brains. So I'm hoping someday I'll probably eject my smartphone, but I'm trying to put this whole thing on a smartphone. <sighs> anyway, not the point, I digress. The point is automation, computers used in the right sense can actually be very, very helpful to humans. And in fact, have allowed us to do quite a bit of things that we couldn't do uh, day to day. So why is that important here? Well, there's a lot of stuff out here that has to be taken care of. Lots of things that need to be monitored. Water, for example, has to be continuously tested, you know, once a week uh, to see how, how is it doing. Well, what happens if you go on vacation? You want to take the family on that road trip you've been dreaming of? You sit there for two weeks on the road while your system fails and you come home to no food? That ain't going to work. You need to, uh, you forgot you got to get your daughter to uh, soccer practice. And uh, you're running late, you're out here working, left the water on, come home, greenhouse is flooded, everything's destroyed. Spend all your time that you don't have cleaning up after yourself because you forgot to turn a valve off. That's not gonna work. I mean, there's so many things that people need to do every day in their lives that if, if you have to be out here every day checking on the system and all the different parts and, and checking for airflow and temperature and turning fans on and off and doing all that stuff, it's just a waste of your God-given talents. What we need is to have a computer do those really dull and dirty projects for us, things that really aren't a good use of our mental capacity. So the automation is here to actually get it to where we can separate ourselves from the system, still essentially run a normal family of four life. Take your wife out on a date, take the kids to band practice, go to soccer camp, go to church on Sundays, do whatever you need to do, uh, whatever it is. You want to be able to go do those things and kind of live that normal type of life and not be stuck in here working all the time like what Mrs. Martian and I are doing right now. I'm really excited about getting this automation put in because it, it, it will allow me to separate from the system some. I can stop being out here all the time checking everything. Mrs. Martian, we can have things in place that watch everything for her. It really reduces the time that you need to spend out here and uh, makes, your, makes your quality of life go up. So, that's why we need automation. If you're on Mars, the same type of idea, right? You got a lot of things you need to do up there and constantly worrying about your food is not one of the things that I personally, I don't want to be worried about my food. I want to have nothing but confidence that my food is always available, always being watched, always being monitored. And when I'm hungry, I go in there, I grab the apple off the tree and I'm good to go, right? I don't want to sit and have to 
monitor everything with my own eyes. I, I want to trust in a system that does that for me so I can go use this thing and this thing for a higher level purpose than just sitting and watching moss grow on a rock. So um, that's why automation is important. You can tell I'm kind of passionate about it. So there you have it. That's the automation. That's where we're currently at and the things that we need to do. Uh, next time we get together, we're going to be talking about pumps and valves and things that flow and go bump in the night, like this one right here right now that's draining on, their, on the fish tank and uh, into the fish tank and filling right here. So we're going to talk about all that next time. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some insights and maybe you got some ideas from it, help you uh, avoid some of my pitfalls and mistakes. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Hit that little bell to get notified when uh, new videos come out. And uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian. Out.